it will happen. And the beginning of the liberation and freedom of Biafra will start from the 2nd of December, 2024. Nothing in this and on this planet will stop the declaration and the restoration of independence of Biafra. Come 2nd December, 2024, here in Finland. And that is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Biafra will come from the diaspora. Some of them are wondering, you are declaring Biafra in exile. Yes, we declare it in exile. We are not even the second or the first people that declared independence in exile. Israel did it. And when you look at the people and listen to the people from this Golibu, Niger area, you see how they mock themselves on social media. Oh, you are in Ezra. Stay in Ezra now. Why all of them are actually in Ezra? You are in Abuja. What is it called? Is it not in Ezra? Is Abuja your fatherland? Some of you are going to do traditional marriage in Abuja. Is Abuja your, your homeland? Are you not in Ezra? You are in Ezra. Your own is even worse because you are you have just two hours away from your village. You can't go there because of your evil. And they are here telling somebody who is thousand miles away. Oh, you you are you are not a, you are not a, uh, come here, come here, come here. As if you go to your village. Look at the one who called himself a, a major four, and the major four name will be banned. People, anybody who give after this Biafra struggle. And the liberation of Biafra. Let me see a family that will name their children or their, their son a Jofo. That one say, oh, uh, when he come to, to uh, Nigeria and uh, talk, we take him serious. He is in Abuja. He can't enter Biafra land. And challenge him. If he say he's a, he's a very reasonable man, let him go to Head Bridge on Monday and shout Simon Ekpa, you are a madman. He should make a live video. And when he is going, he should carry all the military in Anambra and go there. I am telling you the fact. If he do it, I will know he's a man. But you know he cannot do it. But he will sit somewhere in the, in the studio in Abuja and be talking rubbish. So when I come home, can be in exile. As if he's not in exile. All of them that are in Abuja today are all in exile. They can't go to their village. They can't even do burial in their village. They can't even, uh, you know, do traditional marriage in their village. They are the one confessing. Yet, they are challenging me to come to Nigeria. These are stupid bumpers. It is not only them all. People from the north, is this, they are the same. None of them can travel by road to their villages. But they are there. Tell somebody who is how many thousand miles away to come. You people want a... Uh, you want a problem, right? We have given it to you. You can never sleep. You can never. You see that enjoyment you used to do. You come back to your village. You do unko you do. You can never do it again until Biafra come. That thing you make Biafra to go through with your money, your luxury life. You can never do it in your village again. We have deprived you that particular enjoyment. That is where it starts. It is come. We we are we are coming to Abuja. If we don't come. Other terrorist group will come there. That particular enjoyment, you steal money, embezzle the money, and you impoverish your people to suffer in your villages while you are in Abuja enjoying, and then sometime you come to your village with convoy to start running around, putting dust on people. Oh, he's coming, convoy. You can never enjoy it again in your village. It is a, it is a step we have achieved. Depriving you that particular luxury in your village is number one step. If you do not know that it's an achievement under Biafra liberation, it's a very big achievement because those criminals, corrupt leaders who use the, 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 the future of our people to enrich themselves, enrich their families, they can no longer come home to enjoy it. If you, don't, if you have never thought about it this way, it is time you begin to crack your brain is achievement the Biafra Liberation Forces have achieved. Making sure that these people will never come home to enjoy their stolen, ill stolen wealth. Or should I say ill gotten wealth? 
You can never. Until Biafra come, then we will begin to rebuild the land. But for now, you are a gunner. You can never step in, step your foot in Biafra land. Because you, you made these monsters you see today. Your policies for years made the monsters. And now the monsters are after you. You are there going to social media, going to platform to complain. Oh, uh, Southeast, the other one, my business is now in Lagos. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't your business be in Lagos? Some of them can pay for hope of them, man. Creating insecurity. And you want to come back home to enjoy your business. Come to do your business in Biafra London. Huh? You can never do it until Biafra come. And when Biafra come, we will give you condition. You think that this is where fight Biafra as much as you can because what they are doing now is to fight the emergence of Biafra. They will fight with everything they have, but they're going to lose. How, you can you can't fight the spirit and win. They will say, "Oh, um, uh, we, let me leave southeast uh, so that when Biafra come, uh, let, what are they doing in this Biafra self? Uh, uh, who is sure? how can Biafra come? Let us go. After all, we have money. When, when Biafra come, you see what we're going to do to you and your business." I am telling you the fact. You will see when. So my Biafra people, what the Biafra liberation have achieved so far is to make the rich, the criminals, uncomfortable. So anytime you hear them cry, celebrate it. Anytime you hear them say, oh, nobody can marry in the East again, celebrate it. Because the poor, are getting married in the east the poor the people that they made poor the people that they rendered useless are getting married every day and celebrating their marriage in the east not them so all those nonsense they build in their villages they will oh, this one don't build mansion oh. from the money that you're supposed to use to build hotel they'll build a hospital build road build school they use it to build their mansion and now they are crying, they can't go to the emotion. Celebrate it. It's an achievement number one. If you don't know this, know it now. That one of the things that the Biafra Liberation have done is to make these criminals uncomfortable in their own villages. They can never come there. When they tell you, what, have you, what, what did you do? What did you do? Why people are not coming to, people are not, are not, are not, are not more coming to East now to do anything, but people are living there. Those who they have destroyed their future are living there. Those who have, they have destroyed their, their future, they are getting married there. Those who they have destroyed their future are going to school there. Only them will not go to school there. Only them will not do their traditional marriage there. But average and ordinary Biafras are doing traditional marriage. That is the achievement of the Biafra liberation. Number one is to make those people uncomfortable. And we told them they thought we are joking. You can never sleep in your house. I was listening to Dino Maela the other time. He said, very soon, no, these people will be throwing us in the street. They will be using stone to chase us. It is happening. Go to your village now and let us see. Animals. Freedom fighting is not a joke. Freedom fighting, especially where the life of people, we have seen the loss of life of Biafra people in millions. Starting from 1967, three millions, three million Biafrans, children, approximately five million people died. So it is not a joke. We must do everything to restore this independence of Biafra, to appease over five millions of souls that Nigeria wasted. So we can move ahead. You, you think what is happening in Nigeria today is just an ordinary thing? Nigeria is cost. And if you support Nigeria, you are cost. Those running away thinking that in Lagos they will do business. <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't know what is coming. They thought that when they run to Abuja, that's when they're going to do the business. You don't know what is coming. We guarantee you, you can never enter your village. Because the people you have stolen their future are waiting for you to devour you there. 
the people you have destroyed their future, they are waiting for you. Come to your village and stay. Celebrate your Christmas day. Celebrate your your this your hotel. Come build your hotel now and stay there. The people you destroy their future, they are waiting for you to devour you. That is what you have done. You are blaming Simon Ekpa. Was it Simon Ekpa that encouraged you to go and join politics and start destroying people, people's life and future? Was it Simon Ekpa? Was I there? Did he consult me? The people you kill their colleagues and dump their corpse in the river, is the river. They are waiting for you. It will be also, he can't uh, say, it, all of them have children. Now let them go and do traditional marriage in their village now. <laughs> they love Nigeria. They thought that this is going to be everlasting enjoyment. No, it's not. I am telling you the fact. Any day you hear them say they are no longer going to East though, celebrate. Celebrate is an achievement, number one. Because we say that, first of all, those criminals and corrupt politicians can never enjoy peace while others are dying out of their own policy. They made it possible. It is the monster they created. Why are they running away from them? I'm going to wait for questions. Uh, Minister of Communication, take over from here. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Please uh, co-host uh, my Minister Van Van Bamia as well. Um, please, um, whoever has a question, go straight to the question because the Prime Minister has uh, some other meetings to attend, so he doesn't have much time. Uh, Rachel and Fury, over to you, Rachel and Fury. After you, Sir Williams goes. After you, Chima goes. After you, Wane goes. Rachel and Fury, over to you. All right, my brother. Uh, good evening, sir. Am I coming now? Very well, sir. All right. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Greetings to you, my Prime Minister, His Excellency Mazi Simon Epa, for the Biafra people. Thank you very much for the great work you do, sir. Actually, when a teacher teaches and a student understands, no need to ask questions. So what I just want to say, In one of the languages that are primary, Aro weto we be saito, aso we sagbanye bero we. Ke moge ne biafra rabora, aberio we rinu we be bilogele. Give me grete sire Simon Epa. Eyo, aro wete we biro ye. Aro wete we be saito. Aso we sagbanye bero we. Kema wore biafera bora. Aberio we rinu we be bilo gele. Kemewe grete sire Simon Epa. Aro wete we biro ye. Aro weto we be saito hana. Aso we sagbanye bero we. Keme dore biafre raborano. Aberio we rinu we be biwo gele prime minister. Give me the greatest sire Simon Epa. Ewo aro wete we biro ye. Aro weto we be saito. Aso we sagbanye bero we. Kema wore biafre rabora. Aberio we rinu we be bilo gele. Give me the greatest I raise I on it. Thank you very much, sir. The enemies, our enemies try to cook you. You refuse to boil. They try to roast you. You refuse to burn. They even shoot you dangerous substances and poisonous objects. They refuse to penetrate into your body. All because the gods of the gods.
what can the enemies do to Simon Epa? That is the meaning of the song I just sang for you. We are so proud. Alorobo is Biafra last. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Regent Fury. God bless you. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful song. Thank you. Yes. Um, Williams, Sir Williams, over to you, please. Question. Uh, May Chuko Kabiama continue to bless and protect you. He said, he said, he said, am I being heard? Very well, very well. Yes, my Prime Minister, last time I wanted to ask you a question, but uh, the network was very, very bad. But uh, the wise man with the uh, 555 vision asked you a similar question. So let me just uh, go straight to the question. This ID card that is meant for the people in diaspora, and most of us that are living in the zoo here, like Abuja, though we are in exile in Abuja here, and we have um, addresses in uh, America and Canada. That is uh, for concerned uh, friends like me. Uh, they asked me this question to put it to you. If we, can, if we are not uh, eligible for this ID card, since we always travel out and then come back, but we reside in the zoo. So is it, what is your take, sir? Thank you very much. If you travel out and come back, you are eligible for the ID card. Oh. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. All right, we go to Chima. Chima, over to you. Direct question, direct question. Chima, over to you. And uh, sorry, and remember that uh, the document you are going to use will be your visa. Not we don't Thank you, sir. accept we don't accept Nigeria passport. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Chima, you, sir. Over to you. My Prime Minister, good afternoon. Am I coming out clear? Yes. Um, good afternoon, my Prime Minister. This is Chima. I'm calling from Las Vegas. Please, I, I know it's a question and answer section, but I don't know if I can just chip in a little bit of contribution for like one minute, then I'll, I'll give my mic, please. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Based on what you just said now, by Prime Minister, I won't lie to you. I'm at work. You've, you've, you've actually elevated my spirit. I'm so angry right now. These people, they've, they've subjugated us. They treat us like animals. We all, they, all, they all push us to exile. They release Abba Kari, the guy that has killed thousands of, hundreds of thousands of people. They, they, they release the, the, the leader of Mighty Allah, the leader of the fourth terrorist group in the world, fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world. But it's still kept in the canoe there. That is how they, that's how they see us. Instead, they use one over, over bloated guinea pig to come and insult Igbos. Like you said, the Afrans are happy, they are married, they are getting married, they are living their lives in, in the Southeast. But the criminals that have subjugated us, that have stolen our commonwealth, they are the ones that are scared of coming back to, to their villages. They are the ones crying out loud. And we are not going to stop. We are all mad. I'm calling from Las Vegas. We are all mad all over the world. They've brought it upon themselves. And Nigeria will never recover, like you said. We will never, ever recover. Even if they release it the canoe, Nigeria will never recover. I eat my mic. Tonight, over to you. Jeffrey, yeah, unite. Over to you. Are you not close to your mic? Okay, one, uh, one, uh, over to you. One, uh, over to you. One, uh, over to you. One. Uh... Hello. Very well. I can hear you. Right on. Yeah. Hello, my dear Prime Minister. I'm very, very happy. Uh, because when I saw this tweet this morning, I reacted and said it cannot happen. But this is what they did to us in 1967. They created, a, I think, River State or whatever state to bring confusion. So the, the, the only thing I want you to ask them is that, who is the person? Have you? This is the first time we are hearing that somebody, they, they, are reading the, they have read the motion two times. Who is the sponsor? Who is the sponsor of the motion? They didn't mention that. You told that Nigeria is a criminal country. Now, you read the motion for two times in the house. You did not say this is the person who brought the motion that uh, state should be created in the Southeast. 
So this is something that has proven that Nigeria is a criminal country. Like you said, you can't use war to solve problems. You can only use peace. So I'm just very, very happy for you. Because as I say, I used to say, if I wake up in the morning, I don't see a tweet. I become uncomfortable for the whole day. And I'm very, very happy hearing from you tonight. And Biafara, we will never we will resist. Hope Uzolema can never create any state from him. We say, oh, hope, oh my. Who said that Ibu uh, State uh, is not part of Biafara? So we are behind you, one million percent behind you. As you speak, we like your voice, we like your actions. Go ahead. And God will continue to bless you. Are you my maker? Thank you. Uh, David Nana, over to you. Oh, Biafra Unite, are you back on the speaker? Biafra Unite. Okay, David, over to you, David. Biafra Unite is not okay yet. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, my Minister of Information. Am I coming out, sir? Because I can't see anything. I'm just hearing voices. I can hear you. I can hear you. Continue. Continue. We can hear you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. My my Prime Minister, Agune Chamber One, I really appreciate you, sir. Thank you for coming. My Prime Minister, you know, sometimes we are very much flabbergasted or surprised. How do you manage to do this? Every minute, every point in time, you give us updates. You go meetings here and there. Do you sleep? Do you recreate? Do you have a recreational time? Or if that, I begin to wonder how you get this all the energy to do all this. Number one, that is part of my question. Secondly, my PM, there is something that is very, very. I I can't understand how you how this happened in 2015. You were the only person that, you know, when some people left their motherland to go to foreign land to ETM and they were somehow disciplined in that area, you were the only person that come and spoke on his behalf. Then in 2019, you joined Biafra Liberation. You have performed more than people who joined 19 with Gidim. I want to ask you, Prime Minister, does it mean that why in 2015 you were the Igbo, 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 Igbo president in Finland? We are you still doing Igbo president and still studying about how to destroy Nigeria? Because I can't find on within five years what you have achieved. People who have been there since 19 Brigidim have not been able to go even, even achieve one percent of what you have done, sir. That is my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a very important question. I will tell you today one secret. There is no Igbo person today anywhere in the world that is with Nigeria at heart. This is a pure truth. Nobody today that is shouting Nigeria, Nigeria, deep down as an Igbo man and a Biafra, deep down inside their heart. They know Nigeria is not for them. While I was the chairman of Igbo Union of Finland, I know. But you know, there is this spirit that you keep telling you, don't worry, maybe tomorrow, not to worry, maybe next month. So everybody today, from the governors down to the lowest, deep down inside their heart, to school
all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back to back update and information as you the hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop it will be the first one collect them let's go down to the news proper as you the hot you don't share uh, the matter will be say it day for my table now i got to bring down to you one by one first of all uh i'm going to drop a video for you right now uh where the nigerian army uh, uh the nigerian army chief uh, was talking about maze simon epa and what brought about this issue is the issue of terrorism i'll drop the video for you very soon just have patient uh, immediately after this broadcast i will drop the video for you so that you can see what is actually happening there you can hear your uh from the horse's mouth direct where the uh, chief army uh, officer was talking about Mahse simon eba according to him he is uh, uh relating Mahse simon eba to the issue of insecurity uh, that is going on in the southeastern part of nigeria according to uh, the army chief he said that Mazi Simon Eba's word carries death, that he speaks and people dies, uh, that the, the Finland government and the European Union are allowing him to do what he's doing in Finland. According to him, he said that if Eba were to be in Nigeria and be inciting uh, war in Europe, that by now he could have been apprehended. And he is wondering why the European government is shielding Mazi Simon Eba Humadike one of Ndibo. but before i bring you that video i would also like to take you to what the honest and Debo is saying according to honest and Debo, uh, they have uh, denounced the news that they are threatening to uh, buy mass simon but or send him to judgment according to the honest and Debo, raises alarm over threat to life of spokesman honest and Debo. Uh, they are saying that uh, a threat has come to uh, Obonia from Mas Simon Eba's camp, as uh, Mas Simon Eba's camp men claim that Honest and Debo are planning, making plans to apprehend Mas Simon Eba or send him to early judgment. Let's go down to the full details of the information, and immediately after this news, I will bring you that video, and that video is courtesy of um. Uh, uh, courtesy of uh, social media uh, network channels television uh, that video was gotten from there it cost it to them let's go down to this particular information before i'll bring you that particular video ohanez and spokesman disassociate himself and the entire leadership of ohanez and Dibo worldwide from any plot to kill simon eba Chief Alex Obunia, the spokesperson of the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization on Ezendibo Worldwide, has raised the alarm over threats of his life alleged from the camp of Simon Eba, a Biafra activist. Obunia, in a statement issued on Tuesday night, lamented that he had been inundated with phone calls by a known person alleging that he wanted to kill Eba and that they would first kill him before Eba. Eba, a Finland-based Proviafra agitator, had been vocal about the rendition of Kano, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. He has consistently ordered a sit-at-home protest against the continued incarceration of Kano in the custody of the Department of State Service, DSS, in disobedience to several court orders and judgment that ordered his release. Johannes, the spokesperson, disassociated himself and the entire leadership of an SND worldwide from any plot to kill Simon Eba. The statement partly read, since four days ago, my phone has been inundated with phone calls by unknown person alleging that I want to kill Mr. Simon Eba and that they will kill me first before I kill their leader, Mr. Eba. Of course, that I can or will kill Eba is the most ridiculous, malicious, mischievous and satanic of all the statements in this world. It is common knowledge that I don't have the capacity to kill. I am neither trained as a soldier nor as a police officer or in any paramilitary organization with a duty to respond to threats to life and property. At my age, I cannot even kill a fly. Talk more of global 
Leviathan in the person of Mr. Simon Eba. It added, in my duty as a spokesman of Honors and Libo worldwide, I cannot shrink in my duty to stand by the core Igbo interest and honor's position on any national issues. Undoubtedly, I express the view that the Igbo have become uncomfortable with the sit-at-home syndrome in the southeast of Nigeria and that the persistent sit-at-home has caused the Igbo more harm than good. I also absorb the leadership of Ohanese and Libo on the lingering seat at home in the southeast, indicating that Ohanese is a persuasive and not a cohesive organization, thus does not have the capacity to stop the seat at home. I added that if the federal government feels that the security of Nigeria is being threatened by anybody or group, it is the duty of the government and not Ohanese to take the necessary action. I emphasize that Ohanes and Diwo has appealed to our son, Mr. Ekba, to come home for a dialogue and that we will continue to appeal for peace in the Southeast. This is the Ohanes' position and indeed that of Igbo leaders. Let it be known that in spite of the threat to my life and indeed every other patriotic Igbo leader, the Ohanes and Diwo worldwide led by Chief Emmanuel Chukwemeka Iwanyangon will continue to remind the Igbo youth that it is a contradiction to face the barrier of the gun in words. The primary duty of a freedom fighter is to defend and protect his people and not the contrary. It is inconvincible how the destruction of Igbo economy through the in intermittent sit-at-home syndrome will resonate with the central philosophy and aspiration of Igbo in the present Nigeria. Finally, I wish to assure our son, Mr. Simon Eba, that Ohanes Ndibo is interested in his well-being and cannot contemplate nor be a party to a neutralizing or killing him. The mischief makers are once again at work. There is no record where an officer of Ohanes Ndibo has ever killed or taken part in a conspiracy to kill an Igbo or any person, for that matter. Part of our duty. As leaders, is to appeal to our sons of all persuasion that we can work together in the interest of Ndibo. Uh, this one is coming from Chief Obonia, uh, who has uh, come out openly uh, to vindicate himself uh, that he is not part of the plan to kill Maze Simon Eba, that he himself uh, cannot even kill a fly. Talk more of uh, targeting Master Simon Eba, who he mentioned as a global Leviathan, uh, who no one can take down. He's saying that he himself, Obonianya, is too small uh, to pally uh, with such kind of thing. Meanwhile, let me drop you that video so that you'll be able to judge by yourself what is going on, what is coming from the mouth of Chief of Army Staff, NIG, uh, who has... Uh, accused Marcy Simon Epa of various terrorism uh, 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 matters and according to him he is of the opinion uh, that the European Union and the Finland government should join them in order to hunt Epa down but the issue is is Epa really causing uh, insecurity in the southeast is Epa really doing some of the things that he has been accused of doing or is he just a freedom fighter who is fighting for the freedom of his people and standing so that his people will be able to have their freedom. By the time you watch that video, you'll be able to judge by yourself and also see from the horse's mouth. Watch that video and tell me what you observe. Going to take time, like I always tell you, that whatever that concerns freedom is what we do with patience. You have to have patience to be able to follow freedom. Now, this is where your people are still domiciled. For example, you are a Biafran, you are in America, but remember that you have people who are still in the southeast, in the south south, and all the territories. That of course you know according to prophecy, and, and according to prophecy where the Biafrans are supposed to conquer because it is a prophecy. 
That's a prophecy. But some people don't know about it. And if you watch this prophecy, you find out that it comes like a spirit upon each generation. After Odume Gojuku, even before Odume Gojuku came, the Igbos themselves have already known themselves. They have their tradition. When the amalgamation of the white man came, they were not happy about it. But because people who are Igbos are already democratic in nature, they are, their system is already a democratic system. It's a system whereby you cannot take on your fellow neighbor because there are certain rules and regulations to checkmate what you are doing. And then, our elders then are truthful men. You know, they have a man that if you go to his house, you get a truth out of what you are saying. I don't know if you are getting the point. Now, when the white man came, he saw all these things. I found out that the only way to conquer these people is that divide words and rule. I'm going to make these people give power to, the, uh, to the, the most obedient ones that are to you, playing according to your rules, then leave the other one. But let's not go into that side. Even before then, our forefathers have had the prophecy of a land. That's why now you are still here. I have to be bringing you information. Today is Democracy Day, June 12th. And today, the chief legal representative for Mazen and the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Alloy Ejimako, boldly declared on Wednesday that Igbos are the main victims of democracy. Ejimako expressed his opinions about democracy on social media site X, calling it a hollow system devoid of the essential tenets of equality before the law and the free speech, asserting that Democracy is a fair without tolerance for free speech and equality of all below the law. The constitutional lawyer highlighted free speech crucial role in democracy in his article. Ejimako did not mind words in his assessment, asserting that Igbo people have borne the brunt of democracy deficiencies. He pointed to the alleged misuse of illegal processes suppress individuals like Nam Kano as evidence of the systematic injustice faced by Igbo community. Ejimako challenged others to refute his claim, urging to prove me wrong. This statement comes in the wake of Ejimako's accusation against Yusuf Bisichi, Director General of the Department of State Service and the Nigerian government for disregarding court orders regarding Kano's case. Ejimako specifically highlighted the failure of the DSS to grant Kano access to his legal team in a secure and suitable environment as directed by the court. Nandi Kano, currently held in a DSS facility in Abuja, raised concerns about the in inadequacy of, of space to confer with his local representatives in preparation for his defense. Ejimako's notice to the court underscore the importance, the importance of Odu's canons right and ensuring fair treatment by legal standard. As tensions continue to seminar around Kano's case and broader issues of democracy and human rights in Nigeria, the Jamaica Boca stance shed light on the challenges faced by marginalized communities and the ongoing struggle for justice and equality within the democracy framework. Even people that don't see actually happen for that particular matter today. Um, another one, uh, Emmy, uh, don't they deny say they know attack uh, IPOB camp? Uh, and uh, Emmy, uh, they deny that one. But uh, you get one powerful thing uh, where we say it happened between the Enugu, uh, between uh, Imo State, uh, where. Uh, police clashed with government and um, the police people there uh, uh, lost their life. I remember that the trending pattern now is the fight for monarchy. is happening in Kano. It's also happening in Anambra state. Uh, uh, they say that they are vowed to recognize a side monarch. 
and an unbarred some community gathered and exiled some Muna, you know. Emma, some of these things are conspiracy, they are conspiracy because power uh, this thing called power is very intoxicating and absolute power corrupts. And sometimes in Africa, you find that the leaders want to have absolute power. They don't want to be under control. It's not that uh, other countries, the Westerns, don't use power. They use their power. But in using this power, they allow the law also to checkmate them. So you find that if you are able to beat the law, if you are faster than the law, you get what you want. But uh, in, Niger in Africa, in Nigeria, they step on the law. They, they, they don't allow the law to exist. Which is making it unfair game. The, game that, the games that is being pl played in Africa is unfair. Because where the rich takes it all and the poor cannot, can never, ever, ever have opportunity to come to the top. Because everything is all about money. And that's why the country is falling. No values. No values in the country anymore. That's why the country is falling. Everything is all about money. The, the president is there just for the money. The local government chairman is there just for the money. Uh, the, everybody you see there, all for the money. Oh, just for the money. I'm being honest with you. That is why uh, even in the house, in the house that you think that they are together, they are no more together. Look at, look at what is happening in Kang. Between Samusi and the other man. That's power tussle. This person wants to become the 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 Samusi, the Emir of Sokoto of Kano, Emir of Kano. The other one wants to become the Emir of Kano. And now the Emir of Kano, which was known from time origin, is not is not a contest. Before before the Hausa people know who, who is the Emir, they are not contesting it. But now things have changed. Politics, everything now is all about power, politics, and the money. And you see that the leaders in this end of the world does not care about what happens to the poor man. And not even about what happens to the poor man, the development of their community, their town, their government, their constituencies where they are supposed to develop, those places are not developed. I'm being honest with you. You see them on land cruisers, they come to some little little churches, uh, they give offering, maybe a reverend calls them in the church. Instead of the reverend telling them, look at what you're supposed to do for your people, uh, they give the reverend 500,000, say they are supporting bazaar. What is supporting bazaar? The road to the place they are doing the bazaar, the road is no good, it's not tight, there is no electricity. There is no industry, there is no transformer. These are the things that we are there to represent for the people. To make sure that these things, these social amenities are provided in that particular community. And you are there, what you do is that when you go to churches, you donate money. That's, that's not politics. That's not how to do it. Don't donate money, my food. Alright, wonderful people. Um, I see the video, uh, you know, say... Uh, that one has to be a uh, mechanic here, I got one down the person.